p.m. to 10 a.m. And Airtel Tigo money transfers are now free on new sims. Now you know. Airtel Tigo. Life is simple. And Lydia Contraceptive. With Lydia, you truly decide. Welcome to The Point of View. This is your favorite current affairs show on television here on The Point of View. We pick the right topics, we get the right guests, we ask them relevant questions on issues that matter to you. And it's a very sober edition today as we reflect on a spirit of road crashes that have apparently escalated over the past couple of weeks. We'll be delving into that matter and getting your views. If you want to contribute to the show, send us a WhatsApp message on the number on the screen. You can also send us your comments via the social media streams, whether it's Facebook or Twitter or any of the social media platforms. Let's keep it clean and healthy. I'll tell you who my guests are when we come back. Stay with us. I just sent you a tell to go money from my new number. We delivered two healthy kids last night. Congrats. Have you heard? Kwesi has two kids. Have you heard? My son has two kids. Abazi. No, 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 no. No, yes, this is how I'm going to stop me. Have you heard the news about the missing chicken? Have you heard? Get free calls and free Airtel Tigo money transfers for six months on new Airtel Tigo Sims. Get a sim. I'm just not ready yet. I want to wait a little before getting pregnant again. Stop worrying and live free. No matter who you are, Lydia has a contraceptive just for you. Choose the Lydia Daily Contraceptive Pill with iron as your regular contraceptive or the Lydia IUD, a non-hormonal contraceptive for long-term pregnancy prevention. Contact the Lydia Contact Center and let us help you decide how to live free. With Lydia, you truly decide. Welcome back to The Point of View. Don't forget, this program is brought to you by Airtel Tigo. Life is simple. So in the past 10 days, we've had very many crashes. In fact, this weekend was a bloody weekend. If you look at the incidents that occurred in, on our roads at Esuboy, near Tichamante, there was an accident that involved uh, three vehicles. Luckily, nobody died, but about eight people were seriously injured. Our team happened to chance upon that incident, and we'll bring you a report on that later on. Now, over the weekend as well, the GFA had to suspend their Colts football registration after six young footballers perished in a crash into the Ofin River. Six young footballers. There was another accident on the Odumasi Konongo Road where three were left in critical condition. Then on the Accra Cape Coast Road, five people died and seven were injured in an accident. This occurred around the Gogma Budumburam area. Now, in the same eastern region, 10 days ago, 14 passengers perished in a crash at Chichire, which is not too far from Isuboy, on the Accra Kumas Road as well. And then, within the weekend as well, four people died in a car crash at Somanya. Of the four, three were aged between three and 10 years old. One was an adult. So if you add the three to the six, that's nine people. And then, over the same weekend, we also tragically lost one of the star performers of our keyboard idol in the person of Chris Tamaklo. He was one of two who died when their vehicle ran into a parked car or a parked vehicle at a Suchuari junction. <clears throat> Chris was 13, one of our rising stars, one of the best keyboardists within his age group. So today we are asking, what is really going on? Why are we having so many crashes? What can we do? Some are saying we should go back to the war against indiscipline. I'll actually be joined uh, from Kumasi by my, my boss, Mr. Atamensa, to comment on that. Are we going to restart the war against indiscipline, looking at the number of crashes? But in studio, I have two important people. I have Kwame 
Kodi uh, Aituahene, he's the head of compliance regulations at the National Road Safety Authority. Kwame, great to have you. Good to be here, too. Great. Nanaya Akwada is the executive director of the Bureau of Public Safety. They've been compiling data on safety incidents, including road crashes. He has some important information to share and some perspectives as well. Uh, Nanaya, welcome as well. Thank you. Now, I got a video. I don't usually play WhatsApp videos, but this was a very serious video that somebody sent to me earlier today whilst I was discussing the accident involving uh, our, our, our contestant, Chris. This was captured. It's an amateur phone video, but I think it's important to make the point about what's going on in our country. Need to be arrested. Oh, this car needs to be moved. They need to move it. It's because maybe a car went oh, on no. up. All these cars are a granny Kumasi road. A shop cap. She don't sell shop cap for no. Are you the one who owns the car? Who are you here? You are a mess. Where is the driver? Hold on. Stay here. Stay here. Don't move. Stay here. I'm talking to you and you are trying to move. Stay here. Where is the driver? Driver, driver no one. Huh? He's the goal. He's the goal where? You need to move this way. What is there? There's a fault there. You need to. Okay. Now show them. You see the big guy is coming. Is here. There is there is here. Don't worry about it. Let's go to the end. Look at them. Show them. Show them. You see, the upcoming car is coming. It's going to cause a lot of assets. Baby, how do we not see it? Baby, I'm not even seeing it. I'm not even seeing it. Search. No, but here. I'm hiding it. You need to call the ambulance for them to call the police. To for them to direct people. People who die. When when people die, you these people are the cause. This is dangerous. This is who can say and and we na say you na say am for be wa ha. Also who ya? You know who ya no? Who ya no? Who am I saying? This is very dangerous. Ofa, oba tuma ka bi bi a tira am for. This is very dangerous. Where ka si ba am oba tuma ko am for. Am for oba tuma Matiude, you must send them on social media. No police for us as here. Show us here, show us here. You see what I'm saying? You see? You see? You see? How is a car that could be found? How is a car that could be free? No one ever. As a police for us, as a police for us, you are more. As a car, no. Hey, Francis. Hey, 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 hey. This is very, very. This is not right. Uh, my car, uh, car number in here. Uh, GG5178. Company car. Company car. They need to move this vehicle before people die. You see? You see what I'm saying? Now these people cannot go because there is car coming. Now these people cannot go because there is car coming. They are going to get in an accident. This is the main reason why a lot of accident is happening on Accra and Komasi Road. You see that? You see? You see? Seka bakusu e ba waha. Boom! No be able. E seka kasi we ba. Ni road. Ni ni kwansu na ka we abe paki o. Ni kwansu na ka we abe paki. Who saw a slow down? Se seka we ba. We su ba mu sha o. We ba o. We a block. Wa hu sa we a ko shoulder no. Wa hu sa we a ko other side. You see? You see? You see what I'm telling you? Uh, these people, man, Yanko, okay. we need to send this on social media. Uh, the police for them who say, or among who are numbers, and they need to be arrested. This cannot happen. They need to be arrested. Uh, what is the company name? This is the company name. Call link. Yeah. Uh, this is the the, the, the track num tracker number. Okay. And this is the this is the place. So <laughs> So that was a video taken by Peace Dawa Media on Facebook. Somebody shared it with me today. And I'm going to take you to the Suboy incident because a Suboy had an accident on uh, 
Monday, Monday being a holiday, our team was on their way to Kumasi and they chanced upon this. Frema Edunyami uh, brought a report and that part is not actually too far from where this thing was shown. So let, let's take you there. I'm here at Chichiret. This is where um, an accident occurred last week, claiming about 14 lives. There is another accident here involving a tipper truck and a very small vehicle, a saloon car. Now, the tipper truck, it looks like, was um, over speeding, and so it just um, pushed the, the saloon car into a, a ditch, you know, affecting about three cars in the process. In fact, City TV and uh, City FM crew was also right here on the spot um, traveling and then this happened right in front of me. Now, one of our cars was also affected. This is the current situation here. And this is Chichere, where something similar happened. Well, so far, we haven't had any casualties yet, but we've had the ambulance. In fact, the ambulance was able to get here within five minutes of call time and has taken some of um, the injured persons to the hospital. Well, there's someone here who saw everything that happened. Boss, I'd say. Hey, yo. Now, they're not who here. are across the road. This is a car way. I bought them. Pam, pam na. Uh, yellow car be a dinner new H300 a dinner new. It is on who say car ne dinner. You know, lose control. It is on conchay. A man, it is on conchay man. Not the clean in chay. Not the bobo. So private car red way. No, on the best chassis. It is near me. Who you know? Okay. Now cars be say now who say you affected. The van is a cars train. As they say, I affected. I got yellow one. I can have four, but on no intimia and say be bring you on no so that is Eric um, just narrating the whole thing to us. There's another man. Boss, I have a double road. This is the current situation here. There seems to be a lot of confusion. So this is a Suboy. It is next to Chichere where the accident happened last week, claiming about 14 lives. Now the residents here are calling on government to attend to this land because there seem to be too many accidents being recorded on this stretch. This is City TV and we are coming to you right from here. <laughs> So that was uh, a Sioux boy. So it's the same area, a Sioux boy, teacher man, teacher Chichere. And in fact, this incident that Freema chanced upon um, was the second in the at least a week stretch because prior to that, there was another accident with 14 people dying within the same stretch. And those vehicles hadn't even been moved. So that, that's what you have there. Now, today I'll be joined also by Samalata Mensa. Actually, I'll come to him right now on this incident because he, he was there. So, Samens, if you are there, I, I know you are, you are joining us on Zoom from Kumasi. Um, the, the, the place Freema described, is, is, can you talk a bit about it? Is it a slopey area? Because apparently this was the second time in a few days that an accident had occurred there. Thank you, Bernard. Um, now, this place has um, a hilly part and which slopes into a valley. So it's, it's kind of undulating, if you like. And so we were coming from Accra towards Suhum. We were descending from the Accra side of the hill into the valley when we saw the accident happen from the Kumasi side. So 
they happened right in front of us, and we saw everything happen. Um, maybe if you want me to talk about how it happened. How, how did it happen? Because since you okay, saw it, how so did it happen? Now, the big truck that you see um, on the side, lying on the side, coming from Kumase, um, I am told that it was with, with some um, degree of speed. By the time it climbed up the hill, it's, I think the driver noticed that um, a commercial vehicle has stopped by the road but had not moved off the road well. And there were two cars ahead of him. So in order to avoid hitting the commercial vehicle, mm. he first of all, he tried applying the brakes, and the brakes didn't work. And so he moved away from the commercial vehicle, and the first one was to hit the immediate car ahead of him, which I believe would be the BMW. That red car you see there is the BMW car. Aye. At, at this time, we had all stopped on the other side watching this thing happen. Um, maybe about 10 to 15 cars in that traffic had stopped and watching this thing unfold. So it hit the BM, and the BM hit another um, car, mm. I believe is a Prado, and then a fourth car, which is blue, black in color, and dragged the BM and its um, people, the people who were in the, in, in the car, Drag them along. Wow. I, I I don't know how they survived this accident because they were they had scratches when they came out, but we didn't. Oh, see so you mean the people the came out of the car, the red car on the screen, they, they came out. Oh, they all survived. They all survived. I mean, they survived, walked out, were, were even talking about how they saw the <laughs> thing happen. In this car. I am telling you, they all survived. And so wow. we stopped got out wow. of the, our vehicles, parked our cars uh, by the road. Now, when we parked our cars by the road and were trying to help the police, if I, we called the ambulance, mm -hmm. and I must commend the ambulance, they were there in three minutes. In okay. three minutes, they were there. Wow. And the police, whilst we're talking to the police, we noticed that one of the vehicles I suspect was involved in the accident, who was trying to get off the scene, Scratched one of our vehicles um, in the queue. Um, this is after the accident. Accident yes, has ended. Accident. Everybody is relaxed. Then he decided to yes, move. after the accident. Yes, yes. After okay. the accident. And came to scratch um, your car, which was parked. We didn't even see. We just saw later that it had been scratched. <laughs> so, wow. So, yeah. So that's what happened. So the guys, uh, the uh, um, ambulance came. Um, we were able to put the people in, and then they were taken to the hospital. Okay. Police came and organized everything. You so that's what stay there. I'll, I'll come back to you. Let me come to the studio uh, guest. I don't even know. So there's a hill. There's speeding. There's a single carriage lane. What is going on? Why are we having so many accidents this week? Nanael, what's going on here? <laughs> uh, well, uh, good evening to your viewers. Bernard, I wish I could just provide one solid reason why uh, this weekend, I mean, the past weekend was what it was. But I can't do any proper, um, <clears throat> if you like, an post-mortem analysis of the situation without going back as far back as 2017, 2015, when we started getting interested in um, public safety issues in this country. It's important to learn that safety is engineering. It's not just an art. It's engineering. And you can't pay lip service to it. If you don't take steps to put in place the necessary changes that should be in place, mm. you will not get the results that you so badly need. And I think it is the reason we are seeing what we are seeing. If we decide that we would want to do what we do all the time, when incidents happen and it shocks the conscience of the nation, 
the whole nation is in grief. There we have very prominent politicians coming in, making fabulous statements, making very generous donations and promising us heaven. And then we go to sleep. So you are saying we don't want to change our behavior. That's why this keeps happening. Absolutely. So it's a, it's a behavioral issue. Well, if you say behavior, then you are taking, um, perhaps you'll be moving the leadership element out. We, we can so talk what is about it? behavior. We are looking at concrete things that we ourselves as a nation have realized that we need this these things to maintain a certain level of sanity on our roads. Things that are not, excuse my language, in space, mm. we have documented them here. I have with me the road traffic regulations uh, 2012. It will interest you to know, you mentioned a hill, a curve, and whatever. It's here. Yeah, education. We need this. Education. It's key. I see. In, 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 I mean, in your many years at the Road Safety Commission, have you seen a weekend like this? Because we, <laughs> accidents were quite many. Yeah. Particularly on Saturday. What is going on? Well, thank you and good evening again. I would want to particularly comment um, City for the interest that you have shown in, in this sort of discussion. It is only when we continue to engage on these matters that we potentially would impact on, on that space. Uh, ordinarily, when you look at the data and the trends, in fact, the most incidents occur Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. In some cases, when you have a prolonged holidays, it runs into Mondays, but that's what the data says. And uh, often due to festive seasons, People have to travel, having had to travel long periods and tired getting back to their uh, points of origin, speeds and all of that. But in terms of the the days, the particular days. Friday, we Saturday, got, Sunday. Yes, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So it's not surprising? No. Um, but again, the incidents of the last few days. This past Ten days have been very serious. Yes, I think it's been. Is it post lockdown? Is it people are feeling Corona is gone? They want to speed. Some, what's going on? Um, I think it's consistent with the trend. Okay, consistent with the trend. Um, if you look at the numbers again, is it what we take the last few days um, out of context and look at the trend generally? Uh, even though there's increase in interest reportage and also the occurrence of these incidents particularly at this time if we were to look at the trend over time we are not too happy with what's happening but you could see that there's been some steady decline in the in the numbers but not to the portions that we can be comfortable with mm. there are a number of factors i mean today if anybody says that we do not know the reasons why these crashes occur, then we'll not be, I mean, we'll not be truthful to so ourselves. So we know the reasons yes, why they're happening. Know. A lot of study has occurred. Every year we look at the data, which speaks to the causatives, the contributory mm. factors. I, I think what we haven't done well is a level of commitment from all of us. I mean, the respective stakeholder institutions, and as a country, and more so the, the road users. Mm. Um, we have become very disciplined. I mean, um, all the evidence point to the fact that we have acquired sufficient knowledge, but because of laxity um, from the enforcement regime, when I say enforcement, the, the available laws he spoke about, um, the fact that the sanctions are not very punitive, mm. in my view, the fact that we have developed a culture where even if you are apprehended, one is likely to fall on a third party to intervene and allow the institutions. So there are many reasons. Yes, no, many no problem. Reasons. I wanted you to talk to me briefly about trends because you're saying it's consistent with the trend. You show <coughs> some data that suggests that post lockdown, even within lockdown, road has become one of the unsafe places for people in terms of safety. Can you walk me through that quickly? Yeah, um, I think uh, per data that we uh, monitored mm. uh, between January and June, mm. we observed, uh, I think, I would, I wish that actually lockdown um, impacted on uh, our transport 
casualties. If you look at the case, case by case, as in the frequency of occurrence, uh, comparing 2020 half year to 2019 half year, there was a, a, a slight reduction mm. of 3% in cases. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the casualties, mm -hmm. deaths and injuries, there was a huge, huge jump. You know. mm. So, so I fewer accidents are occurring, but people are getting hurt more. More people are dying. So it's becoming the, the accidents are becoming more dangerous. More dangerous. And <clears throat> I think I, I've had to uh, disagree with Kwame on several platforms. You now. disagree with what he's saying? Yes. Uh, What's your I'm what facts really do you have? He's shown some graphs. I put it on the screen. <laughs> Where are your well, facts? Well, I think that um, Anna is doing a lot of work in that space, but um, his data is often based on what is monitored, uh -huh. as opposed to, in our case, what is reported. So what, is, what he, he, his analysis is based on what is monitored in the media, or what okay. the media gets. What is, what is monitored what? in media? In media. And I mean, yours is what is reported to the police. Exactly. So yours will be more. Yes. And then as far as data... So there are more accidents than he has. Yes, I think so. And it's important we, we are very... I mean, we speak to the exact numbers so that we can have a better view and I also see. assist our So planning. how many accidents have occurred between January and June this year? Um, up to August, um, I think we've recorded about 9,300 accidents. 9,300 accidents accident cases, between yes. January and, and August? August. Mm -hmm. and, hey, uh, how many people have died in those accidents? Uh, uh, 1,585. About 1,585. Wow. 1,585 people yeah. between January and, and June. June. August. January, between January and, August. and August, yeah. Wow. So, so, so these are cases that are reported. The area of uh, disagreement, as far as Nana and Nasa are concerned, is that um, he looks at the cases that are reported in the media. No problem. Uh, we are not here to do a, a policy yeah, yeah, I, discussion. I, I, I get it. I want to know, so you're saying the accidents are getting more dangerous. Why? Is it that the cars are getting harder, the accidents are occurring in the night, or the demons are working? What's, what's the major reason why people are dying and getting hurt more? Well, I think it's due to... Um, a gap in enforcement and that gap which we have um, let loose mm. is hitting us hard look um, if you look at our data we observe that high occupancy vehicles mm. and again uh, Kwame will disagree with <laughs> us because we while we monitored um, a significant portion of the vehicles mm. involved in accidents were high occupancy vehicles. High occupancy, a lot of people in the car, like the ones we showed. More than 10. Uh, buses, buses, minivans, minivans and things. And so on, absolutely. These were getting more. And the understanding of the people who put together our road traffic regulations. So there you have it, so, saloon cars yes. and then high occupancy vehicles. So they are very high. Go on. Yes. The, those who put uh, road traffic regulations together were minded about this. So mm -hmm. they put in there in regulation 125 or okay. so, if I can just make reference, mm -hmm. that persons who are moving commercial vehicles, mm -hmm. such as these, mm -hmm. should every year or every half year mm -hmm. undergo refresher training. Okay. Without which training, you are not even... Uh, you will not even be well placed to have your license renewed. But is that done? Well, I think we have to speak. To is that done? The do people who drive high occupancy vehicles do yearly refresher training? No, I mean, they it's, don't do it's it. It's one of the gaps that yeah. we seek to address with a new, um, with a new law. Is it a gap you want? But you've been uh, an authority for a year now. Yes, um, Ben, uh, to be fair to our situation, uh, between last year and this year, there, there's a limited um, um, number of things we could do. In fact, within last year and this year, the requirement was for us to put together a legislative instrument. And um, lockdown and all of the difficulties that came with it um, couldn't allow us to work as faster as we would have wished to do. Nonetheless, as I speak to you, the document is at the Attorney General's Department, and hopefully when Parliament reconvenes, we'll so be the, able to... So the, the, the law to back your change of name has not been 
the law to give you the power to do what you are supposed to do hasn't been passed yet. Yes, That's the airline fully. So you are you have changed in name, but not in yes, in name, in mandate, but uh, beyond the act, there are a number of things that we have to do. For I instance, um, on the issue that Aquada speaks to, this law says that we should regulate the entire commercial transport industry. It's never been done since um, 1957. So, so when they pass the law, will solve our accident problems. Uh, because I mean, they'll give you power to regulate the whole transport <laughs> industry. I'm saying that, yes, um, it will not solve all the problem, but it's a very significant mm. um, reform. You see, in that space, today, what happens is that if I have money to procure a bus, as we have seen, mm. I get a yellow number plate, mm. I get onto the road, I do what I want. Mm -hmm. Nobody takes interest in the quality of the bus beyond your two visits to DVLA, and the driver's license. Mm. But we, we take the view that what happens on the road is comparable to what happens in the airspace. And a lot would have to change as far as operational areas are concerned. And, and those changes will okay. be given full effect. We'll talk about that when we come back. This is the point of view. We'll we come back. We're discussing the spirit of road crisis. We have more footage for you. Uh, one happened at Odumase in Ashanti, another near the river of Fin in Ashanti region. We'll still go back to Samens as well. Is it time to bring back the war against indiscipline? We have some interesting data from John Hopkins, who monitored speed in Ghana. And it's very interesting data. We'll share that with you when we come back as well. Don't go away. Don't just watch. Be wowed. Get fired up. Get down. Catch views. Drop the mic. Choose to be moved. On the move. Hot spot. Any spot. Enjoy a new view. Walk in another's shoes. Power heels. Paws. And feet. Take your stories to the streets. Hold court with court queens. Ice queens. And yas queens. Fly away. Come back home. And enjoy online entertainment on any screen. Sign up at showmax.com and change the way you watch. Africanacity is using plastic waste to provide affordable homes. Hello? Yeah, United and near break. Hey, what? Good. Rashford and Swati. Who are DSTV HD? Life matches are brought to your new free league. I can see what we are seeing now. What you be a La Liga, Syria, Champions League. Who are Premier League? Maybe you're in your new. I said, what about the football? Many football are a dim. My own sanka will HD decoder, dish, any installation. Raya de Bosumi Baku DSTV access, AP or so. When you are a 229 Ghana cities. Welcome back to The Point of View. We're discussing the apparent increase in road crashes, trying to understand the real causes. Many incidents this week, Eastern Region in Suboy, two accidents, we witnessed one live. 14 passengers died at Ichire, five died in Cape Coast, Accra Road crash. Very sad one, GFA suspends cold football registration after six young footballers perished in a crash uh, on the Kumasi Road. We'll take you to that video again. including the driver and his mates were on board this Kia Pregio minivan while returning from Afrancho to Ofenso. The vehicle was conveying young footballers who had gone to register in the course football organized by the Ghana Football Association. According to police, the driver upon reaching a section of the road lost control, hit the embankment of a bridge and fell into the Ofen River. One of the victims gives an account of what happened. And the, the driver was was going speed and he moved from her, her, her lane going to another road. Mm. When he returned from her route to her, on her route and he, her front tire was destroyed mm. and the 
the car over the uh, bridge, mm. go to the uh, riverside, mm. and the car was destroyed. Six of the young footballers died on the spot, while some were rushed to the Confanochi Teaching Hospital, the St. Patrick and Namor Hospitals at Offenso. Medical officer at the Namor SDA Hospital spoke about the interventions so far. About 10 of them uh, yesterday, um, lucky for us, they're all stable right now. We have discharged four of them remaining six. The remaining six, they have little uh, lustration. We did that yesterday, we switched them, and then we are going to assess them this morning. If uh, they are stable, most of them to discharge this morning. So lucky for us, we don't have any of them, uh, any fracture, any deep lustrations. They are all stable and doing well. Relatives and parents of the victims trooped to the hospitals to verify the situation. And some people are still on emergency, okay. but now my brother is fine. Hmm. Yes, it was yesterday, he informed me that the coach has called them, they should come. So I just seen him off around 30 minutes time and I heard the call that there was accident. So Representatives from the Ghana Football Association, led by an executive council member, visited the victims at all the hospitals. Frederick Echampong tells City News the association. So six of the young boys died. It was later reported that the bus was overloaded. Now, the Bloomberg Philanthropist and John Hopkins University have been doing studies on Ghana's rural situation. And some of the findings they, they brought out are pretty serious. We're told, for example, that whereas 83% of drivers wear seat belts, only 14% of passengers wear seat belts. Most structures don't have seat belts. Now, only 2% of people in the rear seat wear seat belts. So mostly, once people are not in front, they don't wear seat belts. They forget that when you are in the back seat, you are more likely to even die because the car can... You can actually be moved by the momentum of the crash through the windscreen. 74% of drivers exceeded the speed limit. Speed limits in Ghana, 50, there's 30, 50, 80, 100. People drive 160. According to this report, 74% were driving above the speed limit. Third point. Close to half of vehicles were observed going over 10 kilometers higher than the speed limit. So if the speed limit is 50, they are doing 60 or more. If it's 80, they are doing 90 or more. Now, let's show you something about speed as well. The report said speed remains a major risk factor in Ghana. And the, the percentage of people who drive above the speed limit. If you look on the, the graph, the, yellow, the red shows those who go by more than 20 kilometers per hour above the speed limit. The light blue, those who go by more than 10 kilometers above the speed limit. And then the simple, the ones on, on top is those who go above the limit. Now, look at this point. From September 2009 to present, it would appear as if the last um, few months, i.e. from March, April 2019 to January, the, the, the ratios are falling. The ratios are falling. We analyze this to show a nice coincidence between that period and the time we were doing the war against indiscipline because it started in April, May 2019 and ran to the end of the year. It looks like the speed, the, the, the preponderance to go fast reduced within that period. And the report said because of people's expectation of police and cameras, they lowered their speeds. Which brings back the question of behavior and discipline because we also mentioned discipline. So I'm going back to Samens on the, on the, on the uh, Zoom. Here we are being told that even though 74% of Ghanaians go above the speed limit, within the period that we and the police were on the road, they seem to lower their speed. <laughs> Yet the war against the discipline has ended. I, do you want to bring it back? <laughs> Thank you, Bernard. The um, thing is, there are efforts to engage, you know, our our communities with this war against indiscipline um, wouldn't succeed as a singular effort. Um, 
we actually had to partner with the with the police service and so it wouldn't be our decision if you like but the point is that if the traction that you require from the police is not there we are we are just a mere media house and we can only speak but the real activity of enforcement would have to be done by the police now what is our experience our experience is that the police would always watch their shoulders to see which politician is looking at them and that's our experience um, again a media house cannot instruct the police or even teach the police how to do their work the collaboration was to see the police do their work while we provide media coverage um, in a continuous manner. This worked out within the three, four, five months and kind of lost the steam. Now, it lost the steam not from the media side, it lost the steam from the police side um, because, one, they also do not have the the resources the required resources if you like um and then the political energy is also not there you cannot arrest too many um government officials you cannot arrest too many politicians um, mm -hmm. because you mm -hmm. are also you are also subject to their leadership and so uh, naturally, the police will be doing their work, but they also fear victimization. Mm. And so um, that's why it turned out the way it did. Um, I don't know, we were expecting that we will have some kind of effort from the um, um, transport ministry mm. or in the ministry. Um, you know, we didn't have any, any such thing. So maybe for this thing to work, Mm. We need some kind of um, push from the Ministry of Interior or the, the Roads or Transport Ministry okay. to make sure, and then again, to make sure that the police is given the independence to do this work. All right. Because then, mm -hmm. of all the reasons that we can give, you know, and, and while we we're doing this, we, we, we outlined a few reasons, you know, bad roads, poor nature of roads, carelessness of road users faulty vehicles, unskilled drivers, inadequate road signs and furniture, um, inefficient uh, MCTU personnel, speeding, drunkenness, indiscipline. Look, of all the things, we thought that the war against indiscipline could handle the low-hanging fruits, which would be the indiscipline on the part of uh, drivers and road users because really that's what we can do. But even that, we did not succeed because people still want to do things the way they want. Okay. They want to do new things at the wrong places. So, so people don't want to change. Let me come to my guest and ask a couple of quick questions. Speed is a major issue. How come we don't have speed cameras in Ghana? Because it seems as if when people know they are being watched, they slow down from what the data is showing. Kwame, is that not part of your recommendation speed cameras yes i agree that uh, it's such a huge concern mm -hmm. and um, over the years working with other uh, stakeholder institutions um, there are a number of things that are being done the police for instance um, have been uh, speaking to automation a project mm -hmm. which would include the deployment of speed cameras mm -hmm. if you drive around our urbanized areas and even some of our major highways you see that the roads are, the speeds are managed with speed ramps and bricks. Um, that's from the engineering point of view. In fact, in this law and in the arrangements that are to be um, introduced, we are requiring that public service vehicles be installed with what we call speed limiters, okay. which will control your speed um, to levels that are defined by, by law. And, and, and also ensure that um, other private users will be law-abiding. I would want to agree with the, the, the statistics. I mean, speed is a major concern, but when you take to advocacy and you do not have the level of support from the enforcement end, you, mm. not, you are likely not to 
achievement. So engineering must be backed by enforcement. Exactly. <coughs> Education must go with enforcement. But in our context, we see engineering to the extent um, of, the, of the speed ramps and the engineering measures as part of mm. the enforcement because then it, have, it forces the driver. But can't you do the enforcement? Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Motorway, no street light. Yeah. A lot of the accidents occur after 7 p.m. Yeah. So clearly darkness is an issue. Yeah. Most commercial drivers don't wear glasses. Yeah. Two of us are wearing glasses. Yeah. Very clear people can't see well. Yeah. Why doesn't the Road Safety Authority insist that roads must have street lights? So that's another end of the enforcement, uh, another side to the enforcement um, uh, problem. So under the new mandate, which is fairly new, the law requires that we are able to sanction institutions for their irresponsibility, especially where their work is standard driven. Mm. So, so the motorway as a case in point, um, if the law requires, if their standard requires that a road of such nature must have um, line markings, must have street <coughs> lights, we'll, we'll have to get to a stage very soon where we'll insist that that must be done. So uh, you, you take the highway authority on for not putting street lights? Yes. So you have the power to do yes, that? Yes, we have, we, have, we have the power to do so. That's what the law requires yeah. of us to do going forward. But there are things in this law you're not already doing. For example, they said people should be trained after a year. Mm -hmm. Go to refresh that course. There's, there's in the law, but you're not doing it. Yes. So what shows that when you do the LI, you will do anything? The implementation this of this law, uh, Ben, uh, if you read the law very carefully, the number of things that were required to be done by an agency contemplated by the ministry. And that is what um, has transformed, if mm. you like, into what the authority is. So you are that to. agency? Yes. That the law contemplated but did not name? Yes. So now that you have the power, you will do it? With all intents, we, we are building the capacity to How be come we have trotters without airbags? When you go to any civilized country, you can't sit in a commercial vehicle without a seat belt. How many seat belts, how many uh, trotters are seat belts have? At circle have seat belts? Uh, those are gaps, and it goes to the same question that we, we are speaking of which is that um, these guys, th there's an easy entry and exit. There's nobody, who, there's no public agency that takes control or takes interest in what these guys do. And that's a sad reality. So if I have money to buy a bus, I decide on what to do, I get into the space. Uh, DVLA, yes, but they, they have a very limited responsibility. It's only mm. when you take your vehicle to their terminal for vehicle testing that they check. But between the period you are there and, and the next six months to one year, a lot happens. So under this new arrangement, a transport operator will be required to apply for a license, operating license, which will be issued based on conditions. And if you fail to adhere to these conditions, your license could be suspended. Really? Revoked. But DVLA checks cars every day. A lot of cars on our streets don't have seat belt, but they still let them... No, so to be fair to the EVLA, you go there, as a private vehicle, you go there once a year. Commercial vehicle, you are there twice a year. Mm. And between once and twice a year, when you are on your own, because of the failure of the system, and because there's nobody taking a second look at your operations, you do what you want. And so you, how many times will they come to you? To come to us. You, you license them once a year, no, based on your We license law. them once a year, but under our arrangement, we are required to appoint inspectors. And we have, as a matter of, as I speak to so you. So you are really sure that changing your name and giving you more power will solve this problem? It will, be, it will make a great deal of impact. Really? Yes. So when is the law going to be passed? What parliamentary conveys? Before election 2020. That's our, that's our expectation. And you license transport vehicle operators. You control the whole value chain of transportation. Yes, when, when the law comes into force, um, we'll come back with an implementation plan. We'll look at the data, and as I speak to you, I'm very much interested in what happens in the intercity roads because that's where we have most of these concerns. I see. But so you want to see safety as a public health issue. Mm -hmm. And if you're happy with what institutions like the FDA does in ensuring that there are wholesome drugs and food on the shelves, then you must take interest in what the authority intends to do with these transport operators. I will need the, the support of the media, and I, my friend Akwanda, and the civil society groups to be on our side. Because, Ben, the reality also is that if you look at that space, about 90% of the operators are private um, actors, and they are interested in profit. Oftentimes, the priority for safety is very little. Mm. 
But each time we have seen in the past when you have tried to introduce one re reform that may appear to be positive, mm. you have agitations, you recoil, the numbers go up, we talk about them, and we go to sleep. So we would want to carry all our stakeholders along so that we begin to see it as our fair, fair enough. Our concern. When I come back, I have to give me his top three things we have to do beyond changing your name and giving you more power. Top three things we need to do to stop this craziness on our roof. This is the point of view. Don't go away. United and near break. What? Rashford and SWAT team. Oh, DSTV HD. Life matches. I put it your new free league. I can see what we are seeing now. What you be La Liga, Syria, Champions League. We are Premier League. Maybe you're in your new. So, we're going to be able to football. Many football are a demo. My own son can wait the decoder. Dish, any installation, Briar de Bosumi Baku DSTV access, AP or so, weighing in a 229 Ghana cities. It's not long ago that things were normal. Good friends could meet for a good drink and share good times. Huh. It's a and then everything changed. And our bars, the center of our communities, all closed, sending us all indoors. But now, things are changing. Kakra, kakra, small, small. We're getting our lives back. Obey ye. We'll get back to the way things were. Hey, mama. Hey, want a drink? Yeah, man. It's time for us to rise up. As we look forward to making our bars safe, Guinness Ghana will invest 10 million CDs through the Union and Boom program to get our bar owners back on their feet. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the FDA. Welcome back to The Point of View. Today we are looking at the state of road crisis and what to do. We have Kwame Kodi Aitiahini, Road Safety Authority. He's the executive, uh, he's the head of regulations and compliance. Nanaya Akwada is the executive secretary of the Bureau of Public Safety. Samalata Mensa is the CEO of CTFM. Nanaya, give me your top three things we need to do. He's already said they have to be empowered. So that's already out. Top three things that need to be done to stop this type of serious killing of people on our roads. Uh, Bernard, before the top three, let me we have just put, three minutes. Yes, so we have to uh, let me the put three. it the road crashes in the country. Let me put it in proper perspective. Okay, our findings indicate that 66 percent, mm -hmm. okay, of accidental deaths in this country is coming from the uh, is coming from road crashes. 66 percent of accidental deaths. 66 percent of accidental deaths coming from road crashes. Wow. So this is something that people have suggested that is a national security matter. For us, the nation is in crisis. And so if we have to tackle this head on, mm. we don't need to be looking at dualization wow. and things that are far reaching. Samata Mensa mentioned low hanging fruit. As I see, we are comparing, just when I wrote that, mm -hmm. then he said that. We are looking at the refresher course. That should be able to materialize today. Refresher course for refresher all course drivers. For all drivers must materialize without any further delay because in the LI-2180, it states clear mm. that the National Road Safety Commission with DVLA would collaborate to do this. Mm -hmm. So I don't know why there are several driving schools around. We can't let this materialize. This can materialize today. 
The second thing is on speed, mm. which we mentioned way back, many years back, that if we can limit or can work to enforce speeding on our roads, we can more than half the death statistics. So refresh, of course, speed, speed. and the we third can one. more than half it. Mm. And then the third one, he has he kept mentioning the new arrangement, the new mm -hmm. arrangement, the new arrangement. Bernard is Coloza. This is the law, the National Road Safety Authority law. Mm -hmm. And he knows it is huge. The powers they have is far. Look, they are now going to be able to receive complaints. Mm. Okay, to receive complaints, they can sanction con uh, contractors who are building roads. They can sanction. They others. can sanction contractors. Absolutely. Uh, they they <laughs> they have authority over what is moving on the road. Mm. They have authority on the human being inside that machine. Wow. It's vast, many powers. If you look at from 27, it's a lot of powers they've been given. So our prayer, I know Kwame, since we started engaging mm. them, I know they are doing a lot of work, even though okay. we are not in the center of it. But our prayer is that they would move with a, a high level of urgency. Mm. Because we are in a crisis, and this is almost a national security matter. When I set out today to come here, I know it's a 50 50 chance. Hey. That is what it, it actually is. And so we need them to lead as an authority. They must we lead. need them to lead this course. And I believe that Kwame and her bo his boss, uh, uh, Engineer Mayo Bribo, 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 they'll do a good job. Do a Let good me go job. to some answers as we wrap up. So you are in Kumasi. How is the situation there? What's happening there? What are you doing there? Um, well, you know, is a, we have two months to elections, and um, as usual, we'll be doing the rounds um, throughout the country to visit constituencies and um, engage um the citizens. So that's what has brought us to the Ashanti region. Um, so we've been here two days and counting. How are we'll their How are their roads? Um, Ina Kumasi, Ina Kumasi, excellent. Ina so Kumasi, far, okay. Uh, Ina Kumasi, excellent. Um, and I mean, no complaints. Um, what about Outer Kumasi? <laughs> Outer Kumasi is where um, you have some of the challenges, but. Granted, a lot of uh, roadworks uh, ongoing. You see, see a lot of them ongoing. Um, even the hotel where, where I am um, went out in the morning. By the time we were going back to the hotel, the whole place was blocked because there was roadworks going on there. And so um, this the, the industry is at an all-time uh, busy high. Mm. Um, so, but but I'm, I'm I, I was happy. Um, you know, everywhere you pass inside Kumasi, um, except for the outskirts where um, they still have some challenges. Very bad roads. Okay. Uh, we wish you well. We'll see you later. Thank you, uh, Samens. He's MD of City. Yeah. He's joined us from Kumasi via Zoom. Um, we were asking whether the war against this thing will come back because we were told that during the war, speed came down. Nanai Akwada, Executive Director, Bureau of Public Safety. Lots of data to share. And Kwame. Kodi Atua, in head of regulations and compliance, National Road Safety Authority, we wish you well. And uh, your law will come to pass. Thank Hopefully you. you can help reduce the accident. Condolences to all the families of those who've lost people, particularly the, the young kids. We, have, we lost 10 kids over the weekend. Six in the River of Fing, three between Odumasi and Dodowa, and Chris Tamaklo of the Keyboard Idol. We lost at Asuchari Junction. May their souls rest in peace. My name is Bernard Avle. We'll see you next time. The Voters' Diary with Vivian Kailuko is next. Stay with CCTV. The Point of View is powered by Airtel Tigo. Have you heard that Airtel Tigo calls from 5 a.m. to 10 a.m. and Airtel Tigo money transfers are now free on new sims? Now you know. Airtel Tigo. Life is simple. And Lydia Contraceptive. With Lydia, you truly decide.